This is a half billion years and more of global temperature and CO2 concentration in the atmosphere. The blue line is temperature. The purple line is CO2. This gives you a slightly negative correlation. There is not a positive correlation between CO2 and temperature over the long-term history. And this is only the last half billion years. There were three and a half more billion years before that, or three, three billion years where there was life before that. But if you'll notice, for example, the first little oval red thing, that's the Silurian Ice Age. There was an ice age when CO2 was at approximately 5,000 ppm, more than 10 times what it is today. Then the next one, the Karoo Ice Age, in the Carboniferous period, coincided with a drop in CO2, but the Carboniferous period was when forests formed. And this resulted in at least an order of magnitude more carbon in biological systems. When the forests grew, before that, everything was flat on the ground or in the ocean. And when forests grew, they sucked a huge amount of carbon out of the atmosphere. <laughs> Look at the big red circle. This is 200 million years. That's, that ice age, the Karoo, lasted for 100 million years. It's a logarithmic scale showing when you get closer to the present, it stretches out more. So you can see what's happened closer to the present. But that is 200 million years, where CO2 and temperature were totally out of sync with each other. When CO2 goes up, temperature comes down. When temperature goes up, CO2 comes down. And CO2 has been coming down now steadily for 150 million years. There's a reason for that. And if you look at the very tail end, on the right-hand side, that little uptick is all we have done. We have not done more than that. But we have at least done that, which has ended the constant downward trend in CO2 in the global atmosphere. CO2 being the main carbon source for all life, in fact, the only carbon source for all life. And it went from 6,000 parts per million to, you'll see soon, 180,000 parts per million not that long ago. Here's the graph showing the present level of CO2 which we have created, it went down to 180 in the last glacial maximum. And the death of plants occurs at 150. So we came along just in time to reverse the constant downward trend of CO2. In other words, we have restored a balance somewhat to the global carbon cycle. We are the salvation of life, not its destroyer. Why did CO2 decline so precipitously for so many million years? These guys, marine calcifying species, all of which learned half a billion years ago from many different phyla to make armor plating for their soft bodies out of calcium carbonate caused the CO2 to come out of the atmosphere into the oceans and constantly down and down and down. 50 million years of cooling. We are at the tail end of a 50 million year cooling period in this Earth. There's no question of this. This is absolutely true. At the tail end there where you see Pleistocene Ice Age on the right, that is where we are now in global temperature. Here's the last 5.5 million years as the climate descended into the Pleistocene Ice Age, which is arbitrarily designated at 2.6 million years ago. Note how many cycles there have been in the Pleistocene. People are fooled into thinking that the end of the most recent major glaciation, glacial advance, was the end of the Ice Age. The Ice Age has had over 40 of those. This is the last 400,000 years. These are the 
four interglacial periods on the top, uh, the, the height, and the four glacial maximums on the bottom. You will note that it takes 80,000 years to go from the interglacial period into the glacial maximum and only 10,000 years to come back out of it. This is in the Milankovitch cycle. Al Gore said it's obvious because CO2 and temperature are so strongly correlated that CO2 must be the cause of the temperature increase. How would the gravity of Jupiter and the Milankovitch cycles changing the tilt of the Earth and the shape of the orbit affect CO2? No, that affects temperature. And when the oceans warm, they give off CO2, and when the oceans cool, they absorb CO2. It's a simple formula. We all know that if you take a glass of water out of the fridge and put it on your counter, bubbles form on the inside of the glass. That's the gases coming out. You put it back in the fridge, the bubbles disappear. So Al Gore had it exactly backwards. The cause here is the temperature warming the oceans. 800,000, there's an 800 year lag in, the, in this Vostok ice core record, 800 year lag between the temperature changing and the CO2 changing. And the effect never comes before the cause. So this is pretty much solid, rock solid stuff. See where it says at the very end there, the year 2020, we're at 415, now it's 420 ppm. The temperature has not followed the CO2 up because the temperature is, uh, the CO2 is going up because of our emissions, but it is not causing the temperature to go up. Okay, coming even closer to the present, as you'll notice, I just keep coming closer to the present. This is the last 6,000 years or so of the Holocene interglacial period that we are in now. So yes, the temperature is going up now. It has been since 1700, when the Little Ice Age came to its lowest temperature. But it has been cooling in fits and starts. There's cycles on cycles, and these are thousand year cycles between the Minoan, the Roman, and the medieval warm period, and there's been cooling periods after each one of those, the little ice age being the coldest one of all, and now we're in an upward trend. But it, there's no, in, no evidence that it's actually caused by our CO2 emissions. Here's one that really demonstrates that. The red line is the longest recorded temperature record with a thermometer from central England. And the black line is our annual CO2 emissions. There's no way that the temperature is responding to the CO2 emissions in an exponential fashion. It's, it's been going up since 1700. And if you will note, if you can see it there, on the left-hand side, you see a very low temperature close to the left-hand side, and then an upward trend. That trend is longer and more than anything that has ever happened since and we were not even emitting CO2 into the atmosphere at that time. So it, it just shows you very clearly that the temperature curve is not correlated strongly or in even any way with the CO2 curve. <laughs>